Hello, and welcome to video two of the Myth series. Uh, it's been a bit of a hiatus here, but ready to start getting into it. Um, so, I guess just to start, I'm going to do something a little bit lighter this, this time. Um, and go over days of the week um, in, in English, which, you know, has its roots in Germanic. Um, the, the name's coming from a lot of the gods. Um, the, the, the four that people are pretty confident about are, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Um, Tuesday being Tears Day, Wednesday being uh, Wudin's Day, Odin, um, Thursday being Thor's Day, um, and finally Friday is Frey's Day. Um, now, on top of that, you know, you have Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, um, and those seem to be related to the... the the Roman roots of the calendar. Um, you know, Saturday, Saturn, um, you know, the titanic force that rules over Jupiter. Um, Sunday, obviously the sun. Um, Romans like the sun, you know, solar calendar was the whole thing. Um, you know, the year versus months for the moon. Um, and then Monday, obviously, you know, the moon again. It, it, in all, all you know, religions, sun and moon are fairly important, um, especially in um, Germanic you know, and Anglo-Saxons, um, you'll see that the moon holds a little bit higher prominence, I'd say, than in a lot of other cultures, um, kind of similar to in Japan, um, because it, it, it's actually interesting because they, they use a male um, personification for the moon and a female personification for the, the sun, um, which, you know, similar thing in Japan, so... I don't know, they, they, it seems like they have a different interpretation for it. Now, the reason this video is titled Tears Day uh, is because I sort of stumbled onto some information on the god, and with the next solar eclipse occurring on Tuesday, October 25th, I felt it was some very nice timing. Um, what I found was a possible link between Tyr and Mithra, which can also offer a bit of light when it comes to the relationship between Tyr and Odin. Um, now. When it comes to the Norse gods, it can be rather difficult to find sources that can be taken at face value. By the time these stories are being shared, there are a large number of cultural wars taking place. Not that this is a unique thing, um, but the stories weren't written for an audience that would be familiar with them. Uh, much like the Book of Luke, it was written for the layman. Um, and the, the big reason for this is that the Germans preferred oral tradition at the time, so it's kind of like the people who wanted to know it would know. There was no reason to write it down. Um, now, what the goal of the people who are writing these stories down is, uh, or was, it's anybody's guess, um, but you can see that there's kind of some parallels with the New Testament that don't quite fit with the rest of the themes. Um, and it's, it's kind of because of these muddied sources and the inherent bases, or biases um, that you almost have to look further back rather than, you know, the written sources that we have. And, you know, that's kind of why you end up exploring the Vedic gods as a form of, you know, as, as a place to understand these gods because you see the similarities between them and kind of their prominence, places that they're placed, and, you know, you know patterns it's the patterns and you know the vedic gods are as far as we know are pre-vedics um as far as we know are some of the oldest ones so they're kind of the the root of the tree if that makes sense now when it comes to both Tyr and mitra um at this point both of these characters are pretty heavily shrouded in mystery um so it sort of leaves a lot of room for the mind to do the work um but they are at least heavily associated with each other in terms of the, the small knowledge we do have on them. Um, and this, this heavy association comes in their relationship to binding oaths. Um, Mithra is said to be the god of friendship um, and oaths, so, so much so that he abhorred all violence, even like holy violence. Um, you know, I essentially believe that everybody should be friends, so violence just didn't even cross his mind as a possibility since, you know, why would you hurt a friend? Um, similarly, like the one story we have about Tyr, um, and it's a fairly well-known one, um, is the tale of him and Fenris. Um, 
basically the shortened version of this is that the Norse gods made a deal with Fenris, who, you know, obviously was a little wary of these gods, um, and, you know, what they had to say, especially a group that includes Loki within them, um, and because of this, Tyr offered to hold his hand in Fenris' mouth, um, and sort of you know, used his arm as collateral, um, you know, kind of like, you know, a way to keep his word, um, um, now, of course, the Norse gods actually went back on their word, so, you know, Tyr ends up losing his hand to Fenris, um, but ultimately, you know, the big takeaway from this is that, you know, Tyr upheld his end of the bargain, um, and that was, you know, justice, is that, you know, because of the trickery of the gods, he lost his hand, that's fair, you know, no, no such thing as a free dinner, right, or a free meal, um, now, some interpretations differ in if it was, if, like, Tyr was in on the betrayal or not. Um, you know, some say that he kind of, he planned to sacrifice his hand, while others say that basically the gods used him as a fall guy. Um, either way, it's not really important. Ultimately, what we should take away from the story is the fact that, you know, Tyr is someone who, you know, he, he you know, puts his hand where his mouth is, so to speak. So there, there is that, that oath. Um, and likewise, you know, the the very small amount of information we do have on Varun is, you know, in 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 these binding oaths and sort of like keeping with what what you've done. You know, what, what it, it's justice. There, there is you know, equal and opposite. You know, action reaction kind of thing. Now, the Romans, um, you know, they tended to compare their gods to a lot of the gods of groups which they conquered. Um, and in their comparison with the Norse gods, they said that um, Tyr was related to Mars. Um, which, I mean, again, we don't really know too much about, you know, what function Tyr really had within you know, Norse society and things like that. Um, a lot more about Mars, obviously. Um, but from what little we do have of Tyr, um, it, it kind of just seems a little superficial. Um, I mean, there's obviously Fenris, who's a wolf, um, and, well, the, the Romans, you know, relationship with wolves and Mars kind of goes back pretty far. Um, now, there... I mean... A lot of the Norse gods are also, you know, they're obviously kind of warrior gods and things like that. But I don't know. I feel like calling Tyr the god of war, um, or at least comparing him to him, is a little... Uh, it, it doesn't really add up anymore, at least. Um, especially when you account for the fact that, you know, like, between Odin and Freya, it's said that, you know, half of them give themselves to love and half of them give them themselves to like battle um and the half that give themselves to battle you know go to valhalla where they hang out with odin um so i don't know it would seem like he's more likely to be the god of war um but you know that's that's more of an aside than anything now obviously nothing has been really said about the relationship between um Tyr and odin um and this is kind of where it starts to get a little bit more interesting is um, when you look at the relationship between Varuna and Mitra. Um, again, uh, there isn't as much mention of Mitra. Uh, most of the time, um, it's kind of in relationship with the Varuna um, and kind of the similar characteristics that they possess. Um, now, however, there, there is one defining difference between the two, um, both being kind of binding gods and stuff like that. Um, and that is that uh, Mithra is heavily associated with the morning sun, um, while Varuna is kind of heavily associated with the evening, so dusk. Um, now, you know, the, <laughs> the, the earlier god being associated with the you know, dawn, and then the later god being associated with, you know, the dusk is... I mean, I don't know how, how aware these people were, they, you know, picking up on some kind of energy or something like that, but... 
don't know. It's uh, it's interesting things. Um, you know, the, the awareness of time. So as time went on, Mithra would lose prominence more and fall further into obscurity as Varuna the Sky God remained atop the pantheon. Uh, now, Sky Gods appear all over the place and tend to be one of, if not the most prominent, you know, God in the pantheon. Um, Zeus and Susano are two quick examples. Um, but with these gods, there's there's often, you know, uh, some other ones around, usually a trinity of some kind. Um, and a- another sky god, which is a bit more obscured, um, but the hints are there, is in Odin. Um, now, one of the hints being kind of his constant knowledge of all that goes on in the world with his ravens kind of delivering information. Um, now, Varuna was named for the binding action of the sky around the earth, kind of this like all encompassing, all knowing energy. So that kind of it, it kind of plays with it. Um, now, um, Odin is also often compared to the Celtic god Lo, um, who <clears throat> was also a god of oaths and kings. Um, now, Lu himself was compared to Mercury. Um, or Hermes, um, and this was actually done by Julius Caesar um, during his time in Gaul. Um, so th- that's a pretty you know, strong comparison there. Um, and considering that's more of a primary source, I'm willing to believe it. I mean, it's obviously you know again, it's like anything. There's biases, but I mean, <laughs> I'll take Julius Caesar's word on it over someone today, I suppose, um, even if Julius Caesar may not have had the highest opinion of the Gauls, which, I don't know, based on my readings, I, I don't really think that's the case. Um, Julius Caesar seems like the kind of guy who, you know, the biggest fall you can make is to not respect your enemy, because that's kind of how you, you know, end up with them taking your head. Um, but anyways... Now, Mercury himself um, obviously is you know, pretty heavily associated with you know, the sky. Not, not necessarily the sky itself, but it, the wind as a messenger. Um, now, the, the Vedic gods, you know, Mithra and Varuna, um, they tend to be more primal forces of nature. Um, so it's kind of likely that within the Greek and Roman pantheons... Um, the characters are more um, related to the titans than the actual god. Um, Still, the the gods themselves kind of carry around a lot of characteristics of the titans, and I mean, in fact, the whole the the battle between the gods and the titans was supposed to be kind of a shift in of, you know, which pantheon is in power. Uh, So, I mean, it, it could very well be seen as sort of a new gods versus old gods war. Um, you know, it, it, it's still, you know, it's kind of open in the air. Um, but you will see that Uranus, who, who is the father of the Titans, um, Saturn, you know, who then gives birth to Zeus and all the gods, um, Uranus is actually, um, considered a, a sky god, um, like straight up just the sky god. So, you know, it, it's possible that Varuna is, you know, more closely related to, um, Uranus, which, you know, fair enough, but I do think there's something in the fact that it's like, well, Zeus is the grandson of Uranus, which is, you know, that's a big deal. Obviously, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, um, so he clearly has a lot of characteristics of him, and maybe it's more defined, which is, you know, rather than having a singular god, they've split it into, you know, the three grandsons and Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades, which is very possible. Um, but ultimately, you know, you see the relationship of Varuna in these, in the, the higher ups, you know, the, 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 the Zeus's, the, the Odins and, you know, the, the rulers of the pantheons. Now, something that comes from Varuna's association with Mercury, um, and in turn Odin, and this is something I've mentioned in a previous video, but this was very long ago and kind of not not too thought out, um, is the idea of magical twins. Um, so the planet Mercury, um, which, you know, its name comes from the Roman god or Greek god Hermes, um, and it is considered the, you know, ruling planet 
of the astrological sign of Gemini, um, which uses the symbol of the twins. Um, the, the sign itself um, is actually associated also with the element of wind, um, and it sort of plays with the concept of two halves making a whole, um, sometimes contradicting halves, sometimes, you know, various things. Um, and <laughs> now, as stated earlier, Varuna and Mithra were, you know, often mentioned together um, and have been considered by, you know, some scholars, um, twin gods. Um, so the, the twin gods are kind of a reoccurring theme in a lot of pre-Vedic stories, um, and they tend to have a heavy association with horsemanship. Um, Odin himself possesses a magical uh, seven-legged horse, um, and again, he is presented as a warrior magician. So it is a possibility that uh, you know, Odin is actually just a composite of the two gods, combined in the positive traits of both. Still, uh, you know, and this is where things are a little up in the air. Um, Thor himself possesses many of Varuna's traits, um, and some have speculated that he, that, that Thor may even be a younger incarnation of Odin. Um, so with Varuna in mind, however, I, I kind of believe Odin's place becomes a bit more distinct and in turn kind of explains why we have a day named for a god, which we know so little about. Um, so besides Varuna's association with the sky, there's also an association with the sea. Um, this again kind of plays into the, the binding nature of the sea and, you know, back before, you know, people had boats and such, you got to the sea and that was, that's kind of the end of the earth. Um, now, so Odin isn't associated with water in any way, but he has a parallel um, in Veles, who's the Slavic god of the underworld. Now, Veles, you know, his similarities are in that, you know, he was a wandering trickster um, who used a lot of magic, um, and he was said to be a bearded man who traveled around, um, which, you know, the, a lot of the myth, myths we have of Odin today place him in a very similar place. Um, now, Odin and Mercury both um, have this, um, and even with, like, the water association that Varuna has that's kind of not a part of Odin and Mercury, I'm still kind of willing to lump them in here um and you know i i think you know wind and water um kind of go hand in hand in a lot of things um you know obviously this isn't what we know today but a lot of the times you'll see um waves and things like that um and the way they're represented is more as you know wind on the sea especially you know, before they understood that, oh, it's the, you know, shifting of tectonic plates that create vibrations to, you know, make waves. Um, you know, back when things were, you know, what I see is what I get, and it, you know, it looked like, you know, water was being blown. Um, so, you know, there there is water and the sky were a lot more similar back, that, back then. Um, so... Besides that, you know, uh, the Varuna Velis kind of plays well together because, you know, Varuna is associated with the night, um, and, you know, Velis is the god of the underworld and magic, which obviously magic versus, you know, not magic, um, tends to have a very heavy association with the night. Um, now, honestly, this has all just been a long way of saying that Mithra and Tyr could possibly be um, older versions or even missing halves of Varuna and Odin, respectively. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't tell us much about their characteristics, um, although perhaps just the thought that, you know, Odin and, you know, Varuna had an equal um, is kind of a strong enough thought um uh, still you know the the most important aspect of this is you know that these two gods were seemingly you know very important in their respective pantheons but for whatever reason um we don't have a lot of information available about them and kind of 
why is that? Um, obviously, there's some less than savory um, associations, especially in some of the characters like Velus and you know the. the uh, so, the the association with the morning light um, tends to be a big no no in a lot of Abrahamic religions. Um, so, it, it essentially. Uh, through you know morning star things like that it becomes lucifer uh, satan so you know satan's bad um which you know that's <clears throat> their prerogative um but a lot of the other stories kind of see them more as again as equals it's not it's not perun is good velis is bad it's you know perun and velis are constantly fighting um and i think that's a major difference between the two it's the, it's an understanding that there are different forces within the world and that maybe sometimes they're they're at opposition with each other that sometimes they work together sometimes they don't but the reality is that you know these things exist basically um so you know uh i think you know, I don't know if more will come out about Mithra. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, same with Tyr. I think that we're kind of in a, a time here when a lot of information is going to start to come out about these guys. So, you know, hopefully we can learn some more. Um, would not be surprised, though, if Tyr and in turn Mithra um, essentially turn out to be... Um, a version of Lucifer. Um, granted, that's kind of different than the Christian or you know Jewish or you know Muslim version of Satan, um, which you know, eh, kind of cheesy reality. Anyways, not to not to crap on that stuff because eh, whatever. Anyways, um, so that's about all I have on this video. Hopefully, you enjoyed it, and yeah, I'm. Um, definitely going to try to do more of these more often um and it is exciting because you know i definitely hit a point where it's like oh, there's no more to learn uh there's they're so it's, you know, i thought i ran out of stuff but i mean this is all you know <laughs> groundbreaking information that you know it's kind of new um and <laughs> well groundbreaking from the past but you know you get the point so i don't know there's always new stuff to learn and i think more and more connections are being made. Um, recently, I've been kind of deep diving a little bit more into Japanese stuff, so that'll probably be what I go into next. Um, Amaterasu, the the sun uh, goddess, I think that's an interesting story, just kind of some of the actors in there. So, I don't know, I'll probably just talk about it, not really do like a comparison or anything. Um, but yeah, look forward to that, guys. And uh, enjoy the rest of your day, week, month, year, however long it takes you to watch my next video. <laughs>